Hey y'all, what's up? Good morning. Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Shanina. Hey girl, hey. Y'all, so today is Sunday and Shanina ain't going nowhere today, okay? Shanina is going to be focusing... Ooh, a little spit bubble. Shanina is going to be focusing on herself for today and her business and all of the things that Shanina wants to do today. So I will be washing my hair. I bought some color. It's not the same color that I got last time, but I'm so excited. It's my regular schmegular color. If you're new to the channel, then you'll see it for the first time today. But if you're not new, then you know. But yes, so I'll be doing that today. And then the clear polish has come off my nails. So we're going to be redoing that today. I don't know if I'm going to put a little bit of color, add a little color in my life or not. We'll have to see what mood I'm in when that time of the day comes. Okay. Um, because sometimes I'll have, I'll be in the mood for one thing. And then by the time I get around to actually doing it, the mood changes. Y'all know how I go. So today also Olivia's hair is going to get washed. Her hair needs to be washed just as bad as mine does. And so I was in the beauty supply store the day before yesterday, y'all. And I went in there to see if they had any of the Paul Mitchell Skinny Serum, which they did not. They barely had any Paul Mitchell products at all. Um, and I've noticed that over the years, like the availability of Paul Mitchell products has lessened. I did notice that like every time I go into the beauty supply store, I'm looking at the Paul Mitchell stuff because it's just out of habit, y'all. When I was in cosmetology school, um, it transitioned at some point before I actually graduated. It transitioned, it transitioned into the Paul Mitchell curriculum. So we ended up using Paul Mitchell products a lot towards the end of my cosmetology school life, right? So every time I go into the beauty supply store, I'm always intrigued to see, you know, do they have any new products out and all that, but girl the word on the curb is they are discontinuing okay they're discontinuing their products <sighs> child when i found this stuff in the store really it took two other people to do it girl the girl i asked the cashier did they even carry it because i didn't see it at the particular location i was at and she was like yeah so then i walked around me and olivia walked around for a little while and didn't see anything I went to her and said, you sure y'all sell it? And she had to ask the, another girl because she was thinking like, well, yeah, I thought we did. You know, that's what she was saying. I thought we did. So she went and asked another young lady and the young lady went right to it. And me and the other girl was kind of looking at each other like, that's it? Because they didn't have anything, y'all. They didn't have anything. They had like a tiny little section of the is it the Paul Mitchell Naturals I think that's what it was I don't know girl don't get me the line it was the gray bottles that's all they had they didn't have any uh uh Aupui shampoo they didn't have any skinny shampoo skinny conditioner skinny serum they didn't have any of that the moisturizing shampoo none of that um so we'll have to do without so we was gonna do a press out on her hair um for this upcoming week but, hmm, I'm trying to decide if I want to do that. I know it's been raining, you know, it rained yesterday and then this past week it's rained on and off, like kind of scattered, um, depending on the area that I was in. So I don't know. I don't want to do all that work and then her hair just puffs up the next day. Y'all, when that happens, oh, I just be feeling away. I'm in my feelings because it takes so long to do it, okay? Only for it to just start poofing back up the next day. Ah! Or two days later. Girl, all that work. So I'm trying to find different hair, you know, things that I can use to help out the process. And I know that the Paul Mitchell Skinny Serum was the bomb.com years ago, right? So I was just like, well, let me give that a try. And they didn't even have any. So I've got one on my y'all know i'm always on amazon okay so of course i do have a travel size one in my amazon cart it's like ten dollars or so i was hoping to find one in store um but it's okay <sighs> i'll just have to get it 
online on Amazon if before they go out of stock, I guess. I don't know, girl. Because like I said, they say that the people are saying that Paul Mitchell is being discontinued. So we'll have to see. All right, so I decided to do a deep conditioner. So I'm using this product. I shared it with you guys before. It was a product that someone, one of my mom's clients had sent her to try so that she could give her feedback um, because she's helping her build her business. So this is the deep conditioner that she sent her. I don't know what's in it, y'all. Um, it does smell like it has a little bit of tea tree in it or some type of peppermint or something something's minty in here and it feels minty on my scalp so uh or airy rather y'all know what i'm saying but anyway this is what i'm using this is the color that i chose this is the color i always get it's the burgundy brown from clear all professionals the shampoo regular schmegler tresemme and then i've got this humectris uh, nexus conditioner which i am gonna still use that but my hair i haven't done a deep conditioner in a while so we're doing that and i've got all of my brushes and stuff that i use regularly soaking in some bleach soap water to clean because i don't like washing our hair and then styling our hair and brushing our hair with dirty hair tools so that's why i've got that going but yeah so 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 I've got this on my head. I'm going to let it sit. I was going to cover it with something, but I think me moving around throughout the day or for a little while anyways, because I'm not going to keep this on here all day, but me moving around will generate some body heat and that'll help it out some. So that's that. So we got that part of my self-care done. So what I'm about to do is sit at my computer because I have a video that I need to go ahead and upload um yeah, what are all my glasses so I'm about to do that and then go ahead and um 
open up my website and all that so that I can have it up. That way, every time I come sit at my desk, then it's ready to go. Let me turn this fan off, y'all. Even though it's cold outside, I still, I got to have the fan when I'm sleeping, okay? I don't care if it's below zero. I got to have me a fan when I go to sleep, okay? <sighs> Girl, I got all this stuff. The laundry is getting done. I should have gave him this blanket on my chair and this little pink blanket that I use. But it's okay. It'll get washed next time. So the other night I cleaned off my computer or most of it anyways. Y'all, I had so many files on my computer that I was running out of disk space. So I had to force myself to take some time to sit here and start deleting stuff. I knew it would take a minute, but I think I've got most of it. Y'all had thousands and thousands of files on this computer. Okay. Okay, good. So I was just waiting for the video to export last night and then I went to bed. So it's completed. So now let me pull up me YouTube. Pull up my YouTube. Uh, all right. So while that's pulling up, I got an email a while back. It is call center related. And the email had some good questions. And even though I've answered these questions in videos before, there are some of you that are new and you probably found me through the Arise information that I used to post a lot of, right? So there's this one email. Um, I just got around to responding to it, but I thought it was a pretty interesting email, pretty interesting question. So I'm just going to read a couple of the questions to you guys. I'm not going to read the whole email in detail because I do want to preserve some privacy for the person that sent this to me. Uh, wait, where did it go? Hold on a second. Wait, did I delete it by accident instead of sending it? Mm. Hold on a second, y'all. Because I responded to the email, but did I? <sighs> did I send it or did I accidentally delete it? Because I don't even see it in my sent files. Oh, wait. I'm tripping. Wrong email. Wrong email address. Let me pull up my other one. I'm looking at my business email. I had y'all sending... I didn't have you guys sending me questions to my business email. I had y'all sending it to just a general email. Okay, so let's go over here. All right. So... Okay, well, I guess I could read the whole email without actually saying the person's name. Okay, so anyways, it says, um, oh, that's my response. I'm tripping. All right, so on this particular email, they have some call center questions. They're, they're trying to launch their call center, and they just have some general questions trying to decide if this is something that would be for them or not. Can y'all see me? Because I don't have my lamp on. Anyway, so the first question was, as far as payroll goes, I've heard that Gusto and SquareUp are really good for beginners. However, I know SquareUp does paperwork for free. Which would you recommend? Gusto, I hear a lot of great things about Gusto, y'all. A lot of agents, I'm sorry, a lot of, uh, hold on, my li I feel like my lips are dry, but a lot of IVOs use SquareUp. Um, as far as filing like the NEC 1099s and stuff like that, I'm not sure if Gusto actually does that for you. And if they do, I don't know if it's free, right? 
I know what the square up it is for you. They file your, your stuff for you so that you don't have to. And then all you have to do is direct your agents on how to grab their 1099s from the square up app. So there's an actual app that agents can register for when this is what I send them when they're doing their direct deposit setup. So they're able to um, go in, they create their account, they set up their direct deposit, and then they can also go back in at the end of the year and see all of their 1099s, right? So um, square up files, all that stuff for me. I don't have to worry about it. Um, easy peasy lemon squeezy and again I've mentioned this before but just in case you're new on the square up I'm not sure what the fees are for gusto I know for square up I get charged five dollars for every agent that I send a direct deposit to so um, like I mentioned before they can get paid three times that month which doesn't happen because you only get paid twice with the rise right if you're servicing so both times the payout the direct deposit hits their account but only get charged the one time right and it's fairly inexpensive it's five dollars so that's how i do that and that's pretty much what i've been using from day one i've looked into other payroll um payroll alternatives but the square that one's been working for me so i feel like if it ain't broke don't fix it right um, so the next question is, the question is, do I have to make a separate direct deposit form or will, will a rise take care of that? The truth is when you become an IBO, you're pretty much on your own as far as learning what to do. There isn't a training class per se, or some sort of, um, tutorial on how to set up your business, the do's, the don'ts, all of that, right? The only thing that Arise really gets into as far as IBOs is if you go to the FAQs, it kind of breaks down, you know, how the agents get paid. So, for example, the deposit, the your service revenue is deposited into a business bank account. And then from that business bank account, it is distributed to your your checking account or whatever account you have set up for direct deposit. Right. Arise does offer a lot of uh, job aids, so different PDFs and things like that to kind of uh, help you out along the way. But as far as like, you know, how to set up your business, what to do, what not to do, where to start, how to do, you know, all that jazz, Arise doesn't get into all that, right? So a lot of us IBOs are pretty much learning from other IBOs in just personal experience. Um so yeah oh so i didn't answer the question okay so the question was do i make a separate direct deposit form yes there's templates oh excuse me y'all there's templates that you can grab online you just do a quick google search for direct deposit forms and you can alter them to fit to fit your business okay so, yes, you do have to provide that on your own. Arise does not provide any of that. Also, Arise does not provide invoices to give your agent. So you'll get an invoice with every with all of your agent's service revenue on it, broken down, how much, how what they worked, what they're getting paid, the dates, yada, 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 right? So that's our invoice. And then what we do is we take that invoice and we create separate it, Oh, excuse me. Okay. We create an invoice for that particular agent. So all of the information that comes off of this one general invoice goes on to the individual invoice for the agent. So I hope that makes sense. Um, all right. So I plan, this is another question. I planned on making a website for people to sign up. I was going to have people upload their resumes and complete an assessment for professionalism purposes, is that overboard or does Arise already do this? Listen, nothing is overboard when it comes to your business, right? You have to, because at the end of the day, it's your business. It's not Arise's business. It's your business that you are partnering with the Arise platform, right? So you are the head honcho of your business. You just have to make sure you stay in compliance legally with your business so that you can have it partnered with the Rise, right? 
So as far as a website, you can make it whatever you want it to be, right? On my website, I do have like a mini applicant. Let me tell y'all, I done tried a few different things. In the very beginning, I was feeling like that too. Like, oh my gosh, am all this stuff I'm doing overboard? But then I was like, you know what? No, the more that I can help the agent, the more they can help my business, right? So on my website, in the very beginning, I'm going to tell you what I did. I had an application. But I also had another application that I created with uh, Google Forms. So in the beginning, I had people go to the website, fill out this mini application that had like a few questions on it, like your general questions, name, uh, email that you can be contacted on, make sure you're not a robot, all that stuff, because I had the CAPTCHA set up. And then once they completed that, they were directed to a actual application that had about maybe 20 questions on it regarding like equipment can you pass the background check da, 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 da. right so yes you can do that because what you don't want to do is waste your time right everybody who gets on the platform is going to have to do a background check everybody is going to have to put a class certification deposit down so you want to make sure before you bring anyone onto your your uh roster per se you want to make sure that they're able to do all that stuff right because you don't want to go through the whole process getting them registered giving them all the the job aids and welcome packet and orientation video like you don't want to do all that only to learn that once they're on the platform they can't pass the background check right it's a waste of time, okay? I'm just going to be honest. It's a waste of time. So it helps to know all that information in the beginning so that you don't create more work for yourself because that's what will end up happening, right? So no, having someone upload their resume, I've done that too. Have you upload your resume? I'll look at your resume and I'll let you know if it's a yay or a nay, right? Um a lot of times in the beginning, which is a mistake that I did learn, that if I was not willing to bring you on, I just didn't respond. Well, that's not professional. So I did create an email, um, like kind of like a rejection letter almost. I rarely had to use it, but I did create one so that I can have it in place to be more professional, right? Instead of just not responding. All right, so no, it's not overboard. Arise doesn't do any of this for you. You are you are your own business owner, right? You're partnering your business with Arise. So you have to make sure you have all this stuff in place, your website, anything that you want to provide to your agents. Now, yes, Arise does, again, provide job aids that you can share with your agents, such as the system and equipment requirements, how to set up your... Um, if you're with a particular client, there's a system that they use, um, how to set that up, how to enroll in the certification, how to do your PC scan, all of that stuff. Those are considered job aids or PDF tutorials, right? So yes, those are available. You can find them in the going to Ava and asking questions. And if you are an IBO, there's a lot of things that you'll have access to if you're an agent. Of course, there are some things that you won't have access to because you're just an agent servicing on the platform, right? You don't necessarily have a business registered. So, yes. All right. So next, I hope I answered that Um I hope, I hope that response was wasn't confusing for anyone. Um, okay, so the next question was, how do you keep track of all your company expenses to put on your tax forms? I just keep a spreadsheet. Y'all, I just keep a basic spreadsheet at that. I don't even do like formulas or anything on my spreadsheet. I just keep a basic spreadsheet. I have it categorized for the year. I use Google uh, Google Sheets. So for 2024, I have to build a new one to start tracking my expenses for this year. But for last year, I just have everything on a spreadsheet. And then I go back like around this time of the year where taxes are, you know, it's tax time. I just go in and then I do all the calculations. I group all my receipts together. I print out my spreadsheet to match my receipts and everything. And that's just that's just how I do it. I don't have a whole lot of expenses for my business, so it's still pretty simple to keep up with. Um, 
and the tools that I use for my business are low cost. So there's not large numbers every month that I'm dealing with as far as maintaining my business. So that's how, how I track my company expenses, what's coming in, what's going out. Um, I just use a spreadsheet. Um, the, there are other alternatives. Some, some people do use like QuickBooks and all that. Um, but for me, I've always just did it with a spreadsheet. So that's what I've stuck with. Now in the future, things may change as my business grows. So keep that in mind. Start small. You know, you can have a big, a big, uh, dream about your business, but always start small. You don't want to put too much on yourself from the very beginning because then you're going to burn out. Right. All right. So the next question was, Ultimately, would you recommend an agent contract? If so, I planned on creating an independent contractor agreement, non-disclosure agreement, and an SOW contract. Are any of these unnecessary? I plan on buying your templates. Well, I don't have any templates for purchase, <laughs> but I do appreciate that. Um, I purchased my independent contractor agreement along with other templates from another IBO. The price at the time was um, reasonable. I have, that was three years ago. I have no idea what they're charging now. However, if you don't want to purchase these contracts from um, this other IBO, uh, you can make them on your own. Here's what I recommend, though, if you decide to do that. If you're going to create your own contracts, you want to make sure that they're legally binding, right? So I would recommend getting legal consultation for your business. Have someone over, you know, look over the contracts that you created and they can guide you on whether they will work or not, right? Um you know, especially if you don't know any legal jargon and all of that, right? A lot of us who are not in school to be lawyers don't know a whole lot of legal jargon, okay? So yeah, you can make your own independent contractor agreement. The non-disclosure agreement, though, is provided by Arise. That is something that everyone has to sign when you register to the platform, whether you're an IBO or not. If you're using the platform, you will have to sign an NDA. Um, during the registration process. Um, so you don't have to worry about that unless you just want to, unless you've got some stuff going on in your business that you don't want nobody else to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the ICA, Independent Contractors Agreement, you can either purchase one um, from someone who already has them established and they're selling them. Unfortunate, well, it's not unfortunate, but I'm not selling them Um or anything like that. So maybe later in the future. But as of today, no. Uh, but yeah, so are any of these unnecessary? They are absolutely necessary. You listen, you're in business, so you wanna have you wanna make sure your business is legit, right? So with any business, there's policies and procedures, provisions for thing just in case things happen. There's always some sort of contract involved, right? Um, even when you're in your apartment, you know, when you move into your apartment, the lease you sign is a contract, you know? So you're going to need that stuff. This helps to protect not only you as a business owner, but the agents as well, right? Um, because you want to legally establish your business relationship with people that are servicing through your company, Right? So yes, it's absolutely necessary. I would not recommend doing any of this without some form of paperwork, you know, involved. Don't just willy nilly it, y'all. Like it's not that type of business. It's a legit business. It's not a scam. It's not something that open today, close tomorrow type of thing. You know, it's a legit business. So you have to treat it like that, right? All right. So next question is, oh, oh, let me go back and SOW contracts. So SOWs are provided through a rise. However, they only protect the rise. OK, so with your SOW, you will get 
you'll see that because you'll have to sign it in order for your agent to service on the platform. However, within this bundle of templates that I purchased, there are master copies of SOWs, right? And it protects Arise and you. So the ones that you get from Arise only protect Arise, right? So you have to have your own SOW that protects both of you guys, you and Arise, and that's what you give to your agent right for them to look over for them to acknowledge by signing things like that right me personally if you are just registering to the platform you will get an sow once i get an sow you'll get an sow and when you sign your sow then i'll go in and i'll sign your sow on the platform right because this is telling when you sign it this is telling me that you took time to read all these pages you know what you're getting into you know what to expect you agree to it so now we can move forward right so sows is an acronym for statement of work for those that are new so it's a it's a it's um yeah all right <laughs> i don't want to confuse y'all i was about to say something else but it'll girl i don't want to confuse y'all so the next question is with technology requirements is that something arise let your agents know or do you have to make this known as well as via emails and website so yes if you create a website and emails then you do want to let your agents know that you have those available for them especially if you have a website that's offering uh more than just general information like more information that's specific to your agents if you're offering that type of stuff on your website then you definitely want to let them know if you have an email where you communicate with your agents you definitely want to let them know that too and as far as the technology system requirements yes you can let them know that in the very beginning you can actually let them know that during your application process um, because there are other work from home platforms such as arise that offer to send you equipment and things like that. I have, um, excuse me, I have seen that in like research with different companies over the years. There are some that will send you, send you equipment. It just depends though on what type of agent you are for them. Like there's this one company where they'll send you computer equipment if you're an employee. If you're a contractor, then you have to supply your own equipment. So that's kind of like how this works. Everybody on this platform is a contractor, so you're responsible for your own equipment, right? So yes, that is something that you can let them know in the very beginning, like, hey, this is what's required in order to work on this platform. Are you able to provide that? Yada, yada, yada. And then you go from there. Um, and then that way they can let you know if they even have the equipment or not, right? Because it's not going to really... If they tell you they don't have the equipment, then there's pretty much nowhere to go after that because the only way you can work on this platform is if you already have the equipment that's compatible, right? So that is something that you can mention in the very beginning um, during your application process. It is available to everyone on the actual platform. It's listed under system and equipment's requirement. This is something you can print out downloaded and then also that same document is on the actual arise work from home website so their main website it's all on there as well um all right so let's see the next question was are agents paid for training no so this is not an employee structure it's a contracting structure so with a contractor a lot of times you have to pay for your own education. In this case, with the rise, they don't charge you for certification classes anymore. What they do is have you put a deposit. I believe they're just trying to stop a lot of people from doing no shows to class because they only have so many spots to fill. And if you've got a bunch of people signing up for a class that they're not showing up, then it um honestly it eliminates any opportunity for anyone who is serious about doing it to sign up right so there's no paid training per se there is a certification course that every agent goes through there's a client assessment um that every agent goes through if you know if they want to work on the platform um 
and so on and so forth. So the next part of that question is, if not, then how do you market unpaid training to potential agents? You just tell the truth. You just, just like I just did, you just let them know that, hey, this is a contracting position. You are responsible for your equipment. There is a certification course available. This is the stipulation to the certification course. And you let them decide, you know, you don't want to. Well, first of all, let me just say this. It's the verbiage. It's all about the verbiage. Never say training because it's not training. It's not a paid training, right? It's a training in a certification sense. So it's not paid. You're still learning, but you don't get paid for it. How it works is towards the end of that certification class, you get to a point where you start to do calls, right? And these are like test calls and stuff or mock calls, whatever you want to call them. Now you will receive service revenue for that because technically you are working, right? Even though you're in certification class, you're working. So you do get paid for that. They're not just going to have you take calls and not get paid for it. But as far as getting paid or receiving some type of compensation for the full duration of the certification class, no, that's not going to happen. Um, so the next part of that question is, do you just put that in the contract and leave it out of the job section? Well, well, not necessarily. You could just say that certification classes are required um, and just go into the details of the certification class. You know, there's a there's a certification class deposit, you know, things like that. Like you don't have to uh, just eliminate the word training altogether. Right. And just use certification. So in the contract. It's not going to be necessary to actually put that the, the certification is unpaid in the contract because by the time they even receive an SOW, but by the time, hopefully by the time you even allow them to register to the platform, you have already shared all of this information, right? Um, and then you let them decide what they want to do. All right. So the next question was, how often is the service fee taken out of a paycheck? Is it, is it each paycheck? Every IBO is different, okay? Um, the administrative fee is going to vary by the IBO. Some IBOs, there's a few IBOs that don't even do administration fees. They they do other things, right? Um, and don't even call it that, but, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's really going to depend on the IBO. So if you want to take the administrative fee out every time your agent receives a direct deposit, you can. You don't have to. There is one fee, though, that's going to always be taken out regardless, and that's the platform usage fee. So no one can really get around that. IBOs have to pay it, too, if you're servicing a client on the platform. All agents have to pay it. That's money that goes to Arise. We don't see that money. All we do is notate it on your invoice and keep it moving. But, yeah, so um, how often that administrative fee is taken out? is at your discretion. The platform usage fee, however, is taken out every time an agent receives a direct, uh, invoice, right? All right, so the next question is, actually, I'm going to leave that because there's two more questions, but I honestly don't have an answer for either one of these two questions because I've never, one of them is how do you compare HoneyBook to Duda.com as a CRM system? I have no idea. I've never used either one. I've heard about HoneyBook a lot this in 2023, but I've never actually used it. I just use Streak on Google because I have Gmail, so it's just easy to do. Um, I did try to use, um, what is it? Oh, I can't even think of it now, but if I think of it, I'll let y'all know later on. But um, but yeah, CRMs, I, I mean, you just, some systems, some tools, you have to kind of pull it up, work with it, see if it's going to work for your business. Cause I've done that. And especially in the very beginning, I, cause like I said, you pretty much learn from other IBOs, right? So I've pulled up different systems, different tools that other people use to see if it's something I can get with some stuck around, some didn't. You know, so it really just depends on how you want to set up your business, how you want to track your agents, 
Um, if you can find a tool that's free in the beginning, use it. Google Streak is free. Okay, so I use it. It's very easy to use. Um, and yeah, so the next question was, do I recommend a VOIP system? Um, I don't really know how to answer that other than to say that there are some clients that are going to require you to use a USB VOIP headset um, to take your calls because your calls are going to be coming through the computer. So that's really the only thing I have to say about that. Um, because you, when you're, when you're working these clients, you do have to follow what they want you to do, right? So if they want you to have a VOIP headset, you're going to have to have a VOIP headset, right? Or else you're going to have to find another client to service. So I guess I did answer all the questions. It's 10 questions. So I guess I did answer all of them, even though number nine, I didn't really know how to because I never used either one of those platforms, but hopefully all the <laughs> hopefully I was able to answer all of the questions um, clearly and I appreciate the email so I'm not sure uh, I'm not going to say the name of this person who sent me this email but if you watch the channel the title of your email was virtual CC questions so that you know who you are I thank you for watching the channel I thank you for sending me these questions um, these are just general questions that I feel like maybe a lot of you wanted to know anyways and maybe have asked in the comments. Y'all, speaking of the comments, so let's switch gears, okay? So speaking of the comments, girl, okay, the thing about the comments is sometimes I don't even see the comments, okay? Like if somebody posted a comment and you responded to one of their comments, a lot of times I don't even see the response. Like it doesn't pop up for me as a notification. I don't see it until like I'm in my back office or YouTube studio and I click on comments and then I start just kind of going through the comments just to see if there's any comments that I might've missed. But other than that, um, yeah, sometimes I don't even see the comments. So if you asked a question about something and you didn't get a response or even a heart, okay, if you didn't get a heart, then I didn't see the question. If you got a heart, but I didn't respond, didn't respond a lot of times. It's because it's a repeated question that I've already answered in the video that you're commenting under, right? So Sometimes that's why I don't respond to virtual call center questions or Arise questions because, y'all, I've been talking about Arise for almost seven years now, probably eight, and it's just repetitive information. A lot of this, I have a whole playlist. Now, give it, some things have changed, okay? But I do, but a lot of the general main stuff is still pretty much the same. So I do have a playlist of all of that stuff. If you guys ever feel like I'm not responding to your questions, um, just check out that playlist. You might actually have your question answered in one of those videos. I don't know how many videos. It's over 100. I know that. But one of your questions may be answered. If it's not answered, and I know I haven't answered that question in a video, then you'll see a response from me. All right, y'all. So this has been on long enough, y'all. We've been talking for about 30 minutes. So let me go rinse this out. All right, y'all, so I'm about to do my eyebrows, and I'm using this pencil. I normally use the brown one, but I don't know where it is. I think it fell down the sink or something. Um, it was here one day and gone the next, so this is really dark. So this is the e.l.f. Instant Lift Brow Pencil, and it's in the color Deep Brown, but y'all, this is giving black to me, so...
clean out my purse. I was in there digging through my purse for this bag earlier this week. I think I told y'all. Yeah, I told y'all that Olivia um, wanted a headband or whatnot for her hair. So we went to the beauty supply store and they had this 3-in-1 Brow Master in black brown. So I'm going to test that out. Not today, but bought that and then they finally had the mascara that i absolutely love in stock it is ruby kisses but it's the very sexy what i like the most about this is the spool the spoolie so the little brush it's thin the bigger brushes ah i don't really like those like this one right here the black radiance which i need to throw in my empties basket because i'm not going to continue to use this it makes my eyes itch this one's kind of thin too so i like the spoolie on this one it was the other one that i had the jet setter lash one that spoolie if i'm not mistaken is a little bit thicker and then i've had mascaras in the past where the spoolie was like thicker and more round didn't like that because i always end up getting the mascara on the top of my lid so they finally had this one in stock absolutely love it so i went ahead and picked that up but yeah, so I'm out of Vaseline, so I'm just using the Shea Butter for the barrier between the razor and my skin. And then on my chin, y'all see me, well, if you're new, just in case you haven't seen it, but for most of you, you guys already know that I've been using this shave cream. So I'm trying to, I want to switch to something else, try something else. This one, I like it. It works. I like the smell and everything. But y'all, I think what it is, it's not really, it doesn't, I think my issue doesn't even have really anything to do with this shaving cream per se or any other shaving cream. I think it's just me. My hair grows back so fast. Like every three or four days, I see the um, the shadow, right? And because it's growing in gray, it's more noticeable. Like, you know, it was easier to cover up when we had to wear a mask and stuff. But since I don't wear a mask anymore, it's noticeable and people do look at it. You know, it's just weird. I don't like it so I feel like the only thing that I can do at this point is to get it like a laser removal I don't know I'm considering it um or I've been thinking about it because that's really like the only like cosmetic thing that I would ever do like I wouldn't do plastic surgery or do any like lifts Botox or anything like that but laser hair removal surgery or surgery or procedure is probably the best word right laser hair removal laser hair removal procedure 